What's up cunts? Um, so we're back with another video today. As you can see, I dyed my hair blonde on the top. Uh, I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. I was kind of just bored. You probably saw on social media fucking everyone's dying their hair and shit. I thought, why the fuck not? Um, I think it looks alright. It'll look a lot better after I get the side faded again. But yeah, it's not really a look that I would kind of go for usually. But like I said, I was just bored. But anyway, today we're going to do a quick Q&A video. Um, I get a bunch of the same questions asked on Instagram all the time and also just some things that people wanted to know so I did a poll on Instagram you guys put your questions there there's a few silly ones obviously so let's get right into it and first one is from mind of Tom and he asks what's your thoughts on the NZ car scene compared to other places you've been uh, how I always compare scenes is you know for so New Zealand only has four million people that's the amount of people that are in just the city of LA. So when we went to America in October for turnout, uh, we went to LA and San Francisco. I went to Seattle by myself. So I've been to you know, New Zealand, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, all for car photography. So comparatively, New Zealand seems pretty small, but there is little things like, so for example, here we don't have the same laws as in the US. So in the US, you have to wait until a car is 25 years old before you're allowed to import it into the country. And it's quite a bit of a cunt to import it, I've heard. So that's why we have quite a lot of Sylvia's, GTR's, RX-7's, lots of rotary, stuff like that. Also because there's you know a lot of shops here that do that, you could buy Sylvia's new here, whereas I think only that 180 was ever sold in America. I think the scene's really good for how big it is. Um, it's not very toxic, I think. Um, not in my experience, at least. You know, everyone's everyone's pretty chill. There's a good variety. Um, we're starting to see more American cars um, coming to the show nowadays. Obviously, lots of Japanese cars, and those are great. There's a really cool tuner community here. Everyone's pretty chill. You know, the one thing I always kind of say when I answer this type of question is, you know, just do whatever you think looks good. If you think that painting your car pink, putting underglow on it, putting some massive wing on it, um, you know, whatever the fuck you want to do, you do it. Whatever makes you happy, that's what you do. And don't care about what anyone else says. Like, I've seen there's been some drama recently. I can't remember who in particular, but a few people. And people are building cars, and then they're getting hate on Facebook for it. And I'm just like, fucking who cares? Like, I understand that, you know, it gets to you a bit. It can. Um, but block them. <laughs> it's Facebook. Just fucking block them. Like, yeah. But anyway, I think the car scene, the NZ car scene... It's coming along really well. Obviously we have that sort of tall poppy syndrome here where people are really jealous and sort of not understanding of success. So that's why a lot of these supercar owners remain very private. And even some of the nicer builds, you know, they remain quite private. Um, people will talk shit about a car for just, you know, the amount of money spent on it. So say someone spends, for example, Campbell. I know how much he spends on his 86 and it's a fuck ton of money. You know, you could get a way faster car for the same amount of money but it's not going to be nearly as unique and that thing is his baby and you know he built it well, you know he you know you know what I mean who gives a fuck what anyone else thinks you do you uh, but the NZ car scene is progressing pretty well I mean, I've only been in it for a few years so what do I know but um, no I like the NZ car scene love rotaries GTRs all that good shit and yeah it's you know it's always diversifying and and all that so I think it's coming along really well and I can't wait to see where it goes it's gonna be really exciting to see where it goes especially as more people can afford things like airlift and stuff like that so all right on to question number two <laughs> that's my mate Oscar he says kill yourself so hi buddy he also asks why are you ugly are we getting a two-step for the Z anytime soon from Zenny underscore the Z already has two-step, it's not perfect, like they're still working it out, or at least they were before all this shit, and obviously I just lost my license, so it's gonna be a few months before we do that. I might get it towed back to the tuning shop after isolation, so that they can get all that fixed, or all of it finished, because I'm still waiting on parts from Japan, have been for about, well, fucking almost a year now. Uh, <laughs> things like clap switches, I had to, basically I had to install cruise control on the car, and put the stock steering wheel with cruise control back in, in order to delete the cruise control and use those switches for uh, two-step launch control, etc. So, the car has two-step. I'll put up a quick clip of that now. So, 
So we're waiting on, I believe, the clutch switch that we can do launch control and then it's going to get a flame map as well. So still waiting on that. That is the current two-step situation. It's going to sound a lot better. That's with a huge leak in the exhaust as well, which is getting fixed. Same thing, waiting on parts, waiting on lockdown to finish. So, yeah. Number five from Hanno Priv. What got you into photography? What got me into photography? So I'm not sure how many people have been following me since I very first started my Instagram page. Probably like fucking no one compared to how many people follow me now. But basically I got into photography at the start of high school. Um, I remember I got like an iPod touch and it was one of the first ones that had a, like a one megapixel camera on it. And I did some traveling with my family, started getting into photography then kind of. Uh, when I, I was like 14 or 15, I think I saved up and bought some Nikon D3300 or some shit like that. Um, started taking pictures of like my dog and beaches or stuff. You know, and then that progressed into some landscape photography. I used to do quite a lot of landscape. I uh, did some, what's it fucking called? Astrophotography, where you take photos of the stars, long exposures. I used to love that shit. Got super into drone landscapes and also sort of like city architecture sort of stuff at one point. I'll see if I can find some old photos of mine and put them up on the screen because I really like doing that stuff actually. Not so much anymore. I'm not as patient anymore. I used to go up into the mountains for hours and you know drive three hours to the top of some mountain and take a photo. I don't really give a shit anymore, I'd rather photograph cars. I think it's more challenging and more exciting, so... Yeah, that's pretty much what got me into photography. Number six from Liam McCormack. Liam, Liam McCormack? Liam McCormack. He doesn't even put a question mark or... It just, he just says, cooking video. I do need to do some cooking videos, I've been slack. I, I'm thinking about doing a video like... Five easy meals to make during lockdown or something like that made some pasta from scratch. I was gonna make some pizza, but the fucking supermarket still doesn't have any yeast. All right, question number seven from Invita Singh. Are you gonna keep the Z, and if so, what do you have planned? Part of me wants to keep the Z. I love it, it's a great reliable car, and I've had a heap of fun with it. Honestly, the 360 horsepower that it makes now, not really enough for me anymore. Um, it doesn't scare me anymore. When I first bought the car, even when it was only 300, it scared the fuck out of me for a few months. It always scared me. Uh, it's still a really fun car, but it's just, yeah, I need more horsepower. I need at least 400, 4, 450, 500. And I know where that goes. You're like, oh, I need 500, then I need 600, then I get, yeah. yeah. Suddenly, a thousand horsepower doesn't scare you anymore, so I know. But um, yeah, I, I like it. I like how it looks. I really like how it looks. I don't love how it sounds, especially like I've been having exhaust leak issues for the past year. Like there's been probably like five weeks out of the last year that my car's actually sounded good. It's getting exhaust leaks fixed all the time. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure that's like a pretty common Z problem. Um, also the parts for my car, because it's the later HR model, it's fucking impossible to find engine parts or exhaust parts for my car. So like the gaskets for the exhaust I have to order from England. So I ordered some like three months ago, they still haven't showed up. I kind of want to like look into the Euros, but I don't think I'm like mature enough for that yet because I still want to like beat on my cars. So I'm thinking either RX-7 or Sylvia. Maybe, I'm thinking like, I've done a lot of research into Sylvia's recently and they're looking really appealing. Like, you know, somewhat cheap, especially compared to RX-7s. Um, you can get a decent amount, you know, you get like 300 kilowatts out of them, like pretty easily. Perfect drift cars. And you know, that's something that I want to explore more. I would love to have a car that I could like street really well and then maybe take it to the track and do some drifting every now and then. I know that's not very realistic. Yeah, maybe Sylvia, we will see. All right, question number eight. What was your first time doing anal like? Asking. <laughs> Um, it was interesting, bro, but I don't know, your mum complained a lot, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's always shit when they don't really super into it, eh, so, I don't know, but if you need some more details, yeah, just ask her, bro, and I'm sure she'll be able to fill you in, so, yeah. Always, always some of those silly cunts in there, right? So, question number nine from, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this, why are you selling the Z? Pretty much always already went over that, don't love the power. You know, I could drop 20k into it, turbo it, and it would be like 550, 600 wheel horsepower, but it's still not gonna sound incredible, and for that money, I might as well just sell it and buy something like overall more happy with, and I also wanna do more, I, I also, I definitely want a manual turbo, like, my next car has to be manual and it has to be turbo. So, you know, something like a Silvio or an RX-7. Question number 10 from Tyrone Gower. Got any RX-7s lined up to buy once the Z's gone? Like I said before, you know, I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna go RX-7 yet. 
FDE Chan. This guy's got a really nice red RX-7. Uh, what photo are you most proud of? That's a very good question, actually. Okay, so I'm gonna hit you with two answers for that one. First, I'm gonna do my favorite photo, my favorite singular photo that I've ever taken, which is this one here of this bagged red Porsche 964 in Cornwall Park in Auckland. Just the lighting was perfect. I really like how I graded this one. The car's beautiful, you know, bagged old school Porsche, looking incredible. The single composition and overall just my favorite photo of all time, I think it's gonna be that. But in terms of my favorite sort of maybe experience taking the photo or the overall, you know, if I could only ever have like one photo describe me or like have one photo on my portfolio ever, it would be the photo that was in the New Zealand Herald of my friend Matt's R8 twin turbo, 1000 horsepower manual, Swag, going over the Harbour Bridge, you guys all know the story. CCTV, cops came to my house, ended up only getting a $100 fine for it, but you know, got two articles in the Herald about it, um, which was pretty good for me. I think I got like 500 followers that day, it was so funny. One was a super enjoyable shoe, that was actually for a um, the rap company that wrapped that car. And it just goes to show like, you know, like it wasn't that bad. Like everyone was saying it was dangerous. You know, I was strapped in and the police tried to find me with like, hanging out of a, or what was it? Hanging onto a vehicle in a dangerous position or some shit? Or riding a vehicle in a dangerous position. So I wasn't riding a vehicle, I was sitting in the back. Anyway, I think that is my favorite sort of story behind a photo. And the Porsche one is my favorite composition overall. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that answered it for you bro. Question number 12 is from Euro Car Scene and they've used my <laughs> My photo of the new Ferrari 488 Pista is their profile photo, so nice. 500k for a daily and a weekend car. I'm gonna assume that you mean 500k total for both. What do you buy? Honestly, I think I would go for. That's a tough one. How much is a? How much is a Huracan? So 2015 Lamborghini Huracan rear-wheel drive with a thousand k's on it is 280 grand. Ish. There's one on Trade Me for 280. Oh, there's another one for 250. So I'd say I would get a Lamborghini Huracan for 250, spend 150k, which is roughly what it would cost to do a really, really good ship in turbos from like Sheepy Race in California. Twin turbo Huracan, rear wheel drive. That would be my weekend car. And if, with only like 100 or 80k left, I would get probably just a Tesla Model 3. Something chill like that, or maybe like a second hand Model S. Yeah. All right, next question from Car Videos. Who do you like more, Adam LZ or TJ Hunt? I think they're both incredible content creators. They're both, you know, super hustlers. Adam LZ, I really, really like you know, all his drifting stuff. And I've met TJ in person. We went and visited his shop uh, when we went to San Diego last year. So I actually got to meet him, which was really, really cool. If I had to choose, I mean, I guess TJ, I just sort of relate to him more and you know, the kind of builds he does. I mean, if I had to choose, I'll say TJ. All right, next question from Jason Mahi. What got you into cars and car photography? So I guess it's a bit different from what got me into photography. Uh, what got me into cars? You know, I only got into the car scene two, three years ago. You know, I was never really into cars as a kid, actually. I mean, like, you know, if a Lambo drove past or something, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. But, you know, I was never, you know, like these fucking 12 year olds walking around today, they know every fucking detail of the car and shit. I've never really been like that. You know, so when I left high school, when I was 18, I moved to, I lived in Queenstown for six months, Melbourne for six months, Wellington for six months. And then when I was like 19, 20, I came back to Auckland and started working, uh, you know, self-employed as a photographer. I bought a Subaru three liter B4 um, and started going to the, the classic Friday night drags because uh, it sounded like fun. And that sort of really got me into like more of the underground scene. Um, sort of into racing and stuff like that and the car photography just sort of fell in after that You know, I was a self-employed photographer doing food commercial stuff wedding sort of, you know, that sort of shit And then as cars became the thing that I was doing in my spare time You know, I just kind of gravitated started shooting my friends cars for free and just started getting really passionate about it I think that car photography is one of the most challenging and you know well, personally interesting kinds of photography. It's 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 a lot more challenging to photograph a car than like really well than to photograph, you know, a wedding or I mean food's pretty difficult, but 
I mean, cars are quite difficult, but just the way that the light reflects off them, especially if they're moving, you know, you can't sort of like stage it. Um, especially like if you're not editing the fuck out of your photos, like, I mean like photoshopping like stuff into the background and stuff. It's quite difficult to get really good sort of natural shots. So yeah, that, uh, that's pretty much how we got into car photography. Next question from Millie Kosciu. I bet I fucked up that pronunciation so bad. Your dream day after lockdown, how would it play out? I mean, my dream, my dream day is like, I, I walk up on a fucking chest of cash and go out and buy myself a Lambo. I don't, I don't think that's what you mean by that. So I'll just interpret that as what am I gonna do the first day after, you know, the day after lockdown. I was gonna say go for a drive, fuck. <laughs> I am going to Uber to my mate's house probably, one of my mates, and we're probably gonna have a party. I'm gonna go and maybe get some Wicked Wings from KFC. <sighs> it's about it, man. I just, uh, my life hasn't changed a lot since in you know, the lockdown. I mean, I, you know, besides from going out for drives and taking photos of cars, mostly just in my room or in the office editing. So it hasn't been super different. I'm looking forward to go back to the gym and I'm gonna shoot so many cars. Like, I'm gonna shoot so many cars. I got so many shoots lined up, photos, videos and have some good shit coming after this lockdown. So yeah, thanks for the question, Millie. Not quite sure what you mean by that, but there you go. And the last question from Toby Watson is, favorite Sylvia? Once again, no, what is your, or a question mark, just favorite Sylvia. Favorite Sylvia currently, I'm gonna say is Jicky Boys in, fuck, is he in Melbourne? Jicky Boy, he's in Australia. He has a sick bagged, I'm not even gonna, Say if it's Kuki or Zinki, I can't remember which one's which. But a sick bagged S14 that is like a pearl black wrap on some mean wheels. Bagged, I think it's like 300 kilowatts. So if I was gonna build a Sylvia, that's what it would look like. That sick, fat ass body kit. Bagged. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for everyone that sent in these questions. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions for me, send me a message on Instagram or in the comments down below. If you're not already subscribed, remember to do that. And yeah, we got some good shit coming. I'm really hoping that lockdown isn't extended for another two plus weeks, which they're saying it probably will be. <sighs> Just really, I really want to go shoot some cars. Anyway, take care guys, and I'll see you next time.